Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at a red mid-range deck titled No Life as we're playing 4 copies of Rampaging Forosodon as well as 4 copies of Tybalt, a Rankish Instigator which all prevent the opponent gaining life which is very effective against the popular mono white life gain decks which rely on those life gain synergies but besides countering the mono white life gain deck I think the deck is also pretty well positioned against the various Gruul aggro decks especially with the inclusion of Lava Coil in the main deck which can take care of a questing beast over a Gruul Spellbreaker and then the Rekindling Phoenix is also pretty tough for the Gruul deck to deal with since it doesn't play much removal and it's pretty hard to get past a 4-3 without the Ember Cleave and then we also have a fighting chance against the Field of the Dead decks again with Rekindling Phoenix being able to fly over a horde of zombies and especially the Rampaging Ferocidon plus Torbran combo which if not dealt with will deal 3 damage for each zombie that enters the battlefield under the opponent's control which will kill them pretty quickly whereas we're only taking 1 damage for each creature that enters the battlefield under our control because Torbran does make that distinction which is pretty nice so the Torbran plus Ferocidon combo is quite strong and then of course we are still playing Goblin Chain Whirler, which is especially good against the Mono White Life Gain deck, full of one toughness creatures, but also very good in combination with Torbran, as you can now deal 3 damage when the Chain Whirler enters battlefields. So we've got a lot of good cards that match up well against the variety of uh, popular decks in Historic. And then uh, to round out the deck, we'll quickly go over the rest of it here. We've got the full playset of Shock, mainly to take out early mana creatures like Lanor Elves, but also pretty good at burning someone out with the Torbran in play. We've got the Darefleet Daredevil as a 2 mana 2 1 first strike that can maybe get back a spell from the opponent's graveyard. And the Daredevil is not amazing against any of the aforementioned decks since they typically don't play a lot of instants and sorceries, but it is still a 2 mana 2 1 first strike, and first strike creatures also get better in multiples since we can potentially hold off a big attacker by just double blocking it with multiple first strike creatures, so it does play well with the Chain Whirler as well. And then against control decks that do play a couple instants and sorceries, the Daredevil is a pretty nice late game play. And the control matchup is the one we're going to struggle with the most with this mid-range red deck compared to the more low to the ground versions that can maybe go under it, so we need all the help we can get. And then against the other red decks, usually going a little bit more mid-rangey and a little bit bigger than the other aggro decks is a good place to be, so we should also have a reasonable matchup against the more aggressive red versions, especially with the inclusion of Goblin Chain Whirler and Rekindling Phoenix that are quite good in the matchup. We've got our Daredevils, we've got our Lava Coils, and then also the full place of the Bone Crusher Giant can use Stomp first to deal 2 damage, and then later play the 3 mana 4 3, which also lines up quite well against the Gruul deck and the various red aggro decks. And then the Stomp ability can also potentially come in handy if you happen to run into the Fog decks that try to prevent all combat damage. We can uh, prevent that with the Stomp. And then moving up the curve, we've got a Rampaging Ferocidon, Goblin Chain Whirler, and Tybalt, which is maybe the only card I would consider cutting if I wanted to make the deck a little bit less uh, punishing against the life gain decks and just make it a little bit better overall. We can maybe replace it with an extra 2-drop or an extra burn spell like Lightning Strike. And then at 4 mana we've got a Rekindling Phoenix, which is often the creature that's going to help us close out the game. Very difficult for a lot of decks to answer. And then Torbran, which is legendary, but we don't mind drawing multiples, because if it sticks around it will usually end the game. And then in the mana base we've got 20 Mountains and 4 Castle Embereth, which also shines with our first strike creatures and our Rampaging Ferocidon, which is hard to block, so it can often get in extra damage. Same with our Rekindling Phoenix, so the castle is definitely an important addition for the deck as well, giving it a little bit more late game. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Not an amazing opening hand, but don't think I can mulligan. Opponent on some sort of band deck. Well, Tybalt also prevents Uro from gaining life. And the Devil Tokens synergize quite well with Torbran. So I've got a fine curve here. Opponent's just gonna keep up 3 mana. 
Could they be playing counter spells here? They definitely could be. In which case, I might just want to play for Ossodon this turn instead of Torbran. Also, they might also be sitting on a sweeper for next turn. Shatter the sky. Let's go with Ferocidon. Alright, it does get countered. So probably no Shatter the Sky incoming then. But it's gonna be hard to resolve Torbrain. They can definitely also have Settled Revenge. Don't really mind if they do. Let's see if Torbrand resolves first. Gets countered, so we can hit for four. And another opt end of turn. Five mana. Is this big to ferry? Nope. Phoenix doesn't seem great in this matchup. Can easily get countered or exiled by a seal away or subtle. So I might want to just try and set up Tybalt plus Shock instead. So let's see if this resolves first. And then I probably don't attack with everyone in case of settle this turn. Just send Daredevil and one Devil token. And they're gonna settle me anyway. Surrender to your emotions. So we still have a little bit of pressure going. Still have four points of burn in hands. Prevent the life gain thanks to Tybalt. And our opponent concedes once they realize that uh, Tybalt prevents the life gain from Uro. Well, I wouldn't necessarily have killed him next turn, but I could have hit him for two, maybe played Phoenix, make another Devil, and then have still four points of burn at the ready. So yeah, even against Uro, Tybalt and Ferocidon can come in handy. On to the next one. Alright, we've got a three of a kind here. Sadly, a couple too many expensive cards for me to keep. There's some three of a kinds I would keep, but Torbrand's not one of them. This ends quite a bit better. And then Tybalt plus Torbran is pretty decent too, so I'm either getting rid of a Lava Coil or a Shock. Uh, probably get rid of the Shock. Alright, not gonna get to kill the Elves turn one, but can maybe kill whatever they ramp into with a Lava Coil, so it's not too bad. And this is Gruul, alright. 4-4 four, four Spellbreaker, good targets. Maybe next turn I can go Shock plus Daredevil. Alright, they have the Questing Beast on 3. So they had the... Very good starts. Tybalt's pretty bad once there's a Questing Beast in play. So I guess the plan's just... Uh, Daredevil, Shock the Elf, or I could... Wait until I play Torbrand to then kill the Beast, although I'll be taking... Quite a beating in the meantime. Yeah, this is kind of tough. Not being able to block the beasts with the Daredevil means I can shock it. Plus uh, deal 2 damage. Just gotta hope to draw another Lava Coil or maybe Rekindling Phoenix next turn.
this a Domri's ambush, Bone Crusher Giant. Bone Crusher would also be quite good here. Take four, down to eight. Chain Whirler's not bad. And can now also block the questing beasts. Don't think I'm attacking. So your opponent's maybe gonna build up a board. Maybe they have Amber Cleave in hand. Alright, never mind. Alright, I guess it worked out. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Reasonable hands. Could this be the life gain deck? Sure looks like it. Alright, time for Tibal to shine. And of course, Chain Warlord as well. Hoping the hog doesn't get out of range. Maybe with Heliot they can put some counters on it. Alright, if we can dodge Heliot here, I like my chances. Nyx Fleece Ram, that's manageable. Alright, I'll start by playing the Chain Whirler here, and then next turn we can uh, play our anti-life gain cards. And there's Linden. They might concede to the Ferocidon here. Wait until I play Tybalt. Alright, well, we got matched against the life gain deck and it was over pretty quickly, according to plan. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hands. Turn one islands. Could we see a flash creature in a turn or an opts? Just an opts. So not exactly sure what we're up against yet. Blue-green. Is this like a blue-green flash counter spell deck? That could be tough. Probably just gonna stomp them end of turn. Alright. I guess I'll do it now. This could also be some sort of uh, fog deck, in which case I wanted to save Stomp to maybe prevent that from happening. Double Reclamation. At least in Best of One we don't have to fear Nexus of Fates. But I have seen these decks before where they just play a lot of card draw and fog effects to prevent uh, dying. The earlier we can force them to start using their fog effects, the better. So we just want to apply as much pressure as we can and eventually draw another Bone Crusher Giant to kill them.
So they have a lot of mana. Question is, do they have the card draw to go with it? As we see, Gift of Paradise. Wish I had a Ferocidon or Tybalt in play. If they have a Chemistry's Insight here, we could be in trouble. Or maybe a Thassa's Intervention. Tamiya is pretty good too. What are they digging for? Thassa's Intervention, and they found it. Alright, so they either have a card draw spell or a counter spell available. Probably just send both creatures at Tamiya for now. Even though I could maybe send one and shock. And then probably just play Ferocidon. Opponent's gonna keep Intervention to draw some cards. And they are making red mana, so this could be Expansion Explosion after all. Explosion for 20. GG's, I guess. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand's a little slow. No place before turn 3. But being on the play does make up for it a little bit. And we do have the Ferocidon plus Torbrand combo, which is great against any creature deck. Could this be another life gain deck? I sure hope so. Oh yes. Even drew the stomp. No real need to stomp the soul warden. Pride mate, I will stomp though. No life gain allowed. And next turn might play Torbran. Alright, history gives them an alternate angle of attack here. That these life gain decks typically don't have. Oh boy. This gonna be good. Chain Warlord dealing three to everything next turn. Opponent takes three right now. Leonin Vanguards, pretty pricey here. All right, is this maybe an unbreakable formation they're keeping up? I could wait and play another Tybalt first, and then Chain Warlord next turn. It's probably fine. The only thing out. And we're only taking one damage here from Torbran and Frostodon. So we'll take a bit of damage from history. But I should be able to manage. Not a soul warden. And yep, 
they had unbreakable formations. If I went for Chain World or last turn, they would have saved the team. So I'm pretty happy we waited. Don't care too much about Tybalt dying. Probably just chump with the devil here. And that's another 3 damage to the opponent's face. And that should be game. Sweet. Well, the deck works as intended against Mono White, so I'm glad that we got to see it in action. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a rare hand with two castle, Ambreth, no mountain. If these were mountains, would I keep? Maybe, but with two castles, I don't think I can. Alright, this is much better. And then what do I keep? Probably gotta keep the lava coil. Although I am on the play, so maybe I can be greedy and bottom it and just keep Ferocidon into Torbrand into Chain Whirler, which is pretty strong. Alright, let's be a little greedy. On the draw I probably would have to keep the lava coil. Sacred Foundry untapped into Fountain of Renewal. Well, my anti-life gain cards are gonna come in handy, but this might be a more controlling deck which we'll uh, struggle with. Dawn of Hope. Alright. I think I prefer Tybalt over Frostodon, which is harder to deal with for them. No life allowed. Alright, it's uh, Torbrand time. Do I make another token or do I keep Tybalt's at uh, 3 here in case they have a Shatter the Sky next turn? I mean, I guess I would still deal damage with the Devil's Dying. And I have a backup Torbrand. It's kind of close here. I think I'll just pass with Tybalt at 3. Alright then, well sometimes I keep getting matched against Shifting Ceratops with my mono blue deck. Today we're on the good side and we're getting matched against Life Gain decks with the anti-Life Gain deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, reasonable hands, although we do need a land or two. But even if we miss on a third land, I've got multiple two mana plays I can make. So I'll try. Could this be another life gain deck? Oh boy, it's my lucky day. And we've got a Ferocidon on curve. Well, I built this deck after getting matched repeatedly against life gain decks. So happy that it's uh, still a trend. Next turn I can maybe Torbrand, maybe Lava Coil, we'll see. I'll set of Life's Bounty. Can still potentially save the Pride Mates. Alright, would uh, definitely take a Chain Warlord off the top. Okay then. Well, it just took a single Ferocidon to break our opponent's spirit. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty good hand. Whenever holding a shock in my opening hand, I gotta make sure to pass the turn quickly. So I don't give it away. Probably just gonna stomp the Conquistador here. 
I guess I could wait. No, let's just do it now. So there are black-white vampires. All vampire decks typically have some life gain elements as well. Play Bone Crusher, maybe next turn I can Stomp plus Shock or Tibal plus Shock or just play Torbran. There's Sorin. Alright. Can take out my Bone Crusher. So now what? I guess this turn I can go Tybalt and then shock the Conquistador. And next turn Torbrand's gonna be much better with a bit of a board presence. Puts a count for no lieutenants and another legion landing. So, yeah, I think the play is just play Torbran, attack Sorin. I could just lava coil and stomp both of their creatures, attack Sorin, which I guess is decent too. And then next turn, I'll play Torbran with two devil tokens in play. I guess I like that better. Another Conquistador. Alright, Torbrand should be good to go. Even if they block certain dice. And then the Phoenix should be able to take over. Sweet. So yeah, this mid rangey red deck, it's gonna suffer against uh, control decks. It's maybe gonna be a tad too slow against combo decks. So those are the matchups you're giving up compared to the more aggressive builds. But it does give you a lot more game against other creature decks, the life gain decks, and various aggro decks as well, which seem to be more popular in Historic. So that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.